Welcome to Market Talk. I'm Amber Lancaster. Thank you for joining me here on the Paul Manpilly YouTube channel. As you can see, my wonderful colleague Paul Manpilly is taking some well-deserved time off, but even while he's off, he's tweeting. So to follow Paul on Twitter and get his latest and greatest thoughts, please go to at Guru. I tweet often as well, so you may follow me on Twitter at a Lancaster Guru. Uh, today's update is for the week of June 15th, 2020. I'll begin with the latest economic overview, my innovation story of the week, which actually knocked my socks off, and I'm sure yours too, and developments in America 2.0. So let's begin. Homebase, a free scheduling tool used by more than 100,000 businesses and 1 million hourly employees in the U.S., continues to give us insight into the U.S. employment picture in real time. You see, cloud-based Homebase is a time clock timesheet scheduling and hiring tool for the 21st century. Thousands of small and local U.S. businesses use the scheduling tool, and Homebase's recent labor market report shows encouraging signs. Check out this chart. This chart depicts three lines, which shows three important data points. Line number one shows the number of business locations that are now open, Line number two shows the number of employees working, and line number three shows the number of hours worked by these employees. And as you can see, all three data points are on the rise. In all, this chart shows that the U.S. labor market is gradually improving and is back to about 70% of the pre-crisis levels set in January. And moreover, uh, this labor market data from Homebase closely tracked the stunning May jobs report gains. So if you were following their data, you would not have been surprised by the good numbers. And what's also worth noting is that home-based data is showing that jobs likely continued to um, grow and, and actually have good gains in early June as well. And next up, let's take a quick look at the University of Michigan sentiment preliminary June number posted this past Friday. The sentiment index jumped the most since 2016 on jobs gains. Uh, the index climbed 6.6 .6 points to 78.9, beating economists' expectations projected to rise to 75. The index, which surveys how everyday consumers like you and like me feel about our personal finances and general uh, and business market conditions. Well, per Bloomberg, it revealed the following, that, quote, the share of respondents who reported they expect their finances to actually improve in the next years, and that rose to 42% from 32. And the gain was due to rising income with an expected annual improvement of 1.3% up from 0.5%, end quote. So where our U.S. economic releases are concerned, there are six major releases this week, and the data releases will give us a sneak peek of the effects of the U.S. economy's um, current reopening. On Tuesday, May retail sales advanced month over month, and May industrial production month over month will post at 8.30 a.m., and 9.15 a.m. respectively. On Wednesday, weekly MBA mortgage applications and May housing starts will post at 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively. And on Thursday, weekly jobless claims and the May leading index will post at 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. respectively. Now for my innovation story of the week. As you know, our theme here at Gold Profits is all about megatrend tech innovations like Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, and of course, the rising new world of America 2.0. While well, I am pleased to share that a new report from UBS Group titled The Future of the Tech Economy supports our long-held view. As Paul has been saying for months now, this health crisis will push our America 2.0 and tech innovation themes full steam ahead. And UBS is now reporting the same sentiments. They're saying that the outbreak is, quote, expediting the digitalization of the world economy, end quote. And simply put, 
UBS is downright excited about this confluence of economic forces and technology. And they call this coming change to the tech economy, techonomics. And here's how they put it, quote, we live in exciting times. While a potentially transformative innovation used to be a once in a century phenomena, the pipeline is now packed. Technology breakthroughs like quantum computing and fuel cells offer incredible potential to upend the global economy. Closer to the ground, areas like drones and 3D printing are already providing a glimpse into what the future holds. And speaking of 3D printing and all the extraordinary tech that will come from this one industry, I tweeted out this amazing uh, 3D printing article last week. Uh, the University of Colorado Denver scientists have developed a method to 3D print human body cartilage with shock absorbing qualities. Uh, this new discovery 3D prints liquid crystal elastomers. So people who need joint implants for their spine or their knees will soon have more options. So from joint uh, replacements to motorcycles, food to housing. In my opinion, the future of 3D printing, it has no bounds. For example, if you like chocolate candies, there will soon be an option to have an at-home 3D printing machine in your kitchen to print these delicious candy treats on demand. And that leads me to a question I thought I'd ask uh, for this week's uh, update. Is there something that you use often that you'd like to see 3D printed, I'd love to see what you come up with. And finally, in our America 2.0 update, as this chart shows, uh, U.S. mortgage purchase applications have just closed in on an 11-year high. A Bloomberg Opinions' Connor Sin framed this rise this way, quote, for various reasons, the supply of homes on the market continues to fall to record lows and home prices are, if anything, accelerating uh, for many homeowners stressed about the value of their biggest investment. It's a welcome relief. The biggest reason that we're seeing home price growth accelerating in the middle of a pandemic is that the disruption to the supply of housing is persisting longer than a disruption to demand, that is, would-be millennial buyers. The recent weekly mortgage data showed that purchase applications rose for the eighth consecutive week and are approaching an 11-year high on seasonally adjusted basis. And part of the reason for the quick rebound in demand is surely the decline in interest rates on mortgages to an all-time lows with few signs that are likely to rise for the foreseeable future, end quote. So with that being said, we see future gains in several America 2.0 megatrends from millennials to housing and stocks geared toward our America 2.0 megatrends. So to take advantage of this, uh, these stock trends, look no further than Paul Manpilly and Ian Dyer's stock option service, Rapid Profit Trader. With Rapid Profit Trader, the goal is to capitalize on these trends with great potential, not just great potential, exponential potential and growth in options gains. So click on the strong hands icon over my shoulder for more details on this trading service. So that's it for me. Thanks everyone for tuning in this week. And on behalf of Paul Manpilly and the entire Bull Profits team, we wish you a great and safe week ahead. And until next time, take care.